you think the self-help junkie, like someone who goes all out in self-help, they'd be amazing. But in reality, what happens is they turn out to be the most tense, self-hateful person you could meet. And it's something to kind of realize, like objectively look at it. Like if you go to a lot of self-help seminars, this is the ideal and this is the pinnacle of someone who optimizes a paradigm of scarcity, as I call it. They come up to you like, hey man, ha ha ha, how's it going? I've been working on myself, I got my fucking green shake and I got my bulletproof coffee and I got all this other cool thing, isn't it? Um, do you like the seminar? Ha <laughs> I'm so happy, hey, hey. And you're just like, what the fuck is this? That's the self-help junkie. That's what everyone in self-help is aspiring to be. And they just can't relax. They're like, ha ah, and it's always running away from being negative running away from not being perfect, running away from not hustling, not being all your like tasks in line. Like you'll see people with like their notebook, like look at how I classify everything. I got my to-do list for every second of the day. <laughs> Holy shit, I wake up, I do my cold shower for 15 seconds. Then for 14 seconds, I will think about this and then complete my journal and do gratitude. And oh my God, I must burn you inside. And then if they miss one thing, you hate yourself. You dumb fuck, you missed the one sentence in the gratitude journal. Hate, 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 hate. <laughs> You know, um, this will happen with health. This actually got me with health because you get into like being healthy and you're like, okay, start being aware of my health. And then when you get into it, there's this whole universe of healthy food. There's different qualities of like, again, oh, there's like the organic thing. There's the supplements. Holy shit. I mentioned like bulletproof. You get into that. It's like, there's these supplements you need and these supplements you need. And at the end, you're like, you went from like eating healthy to having 50 fucking vitamins. You're chugging with your food at this specific time and you calculate this. And if you miss one vitamin, <sighs> you feel like shit. You feel like you just ate McDonald's and cheated. That's how I felt. I kid you not. Like everything would be perfect. I missed this one little vitamin of like some herb. Like, <laughs> Let's just say, holy basil. Or, or I ran out and instead of having the two pills, I only had one. And I just feel like I just chugged McDonald's. I'm like, you dumb fuck, today's ruined. You're unhealthy, you're not perfect. You can just feel it. So gross. Blah. And then is this ripple effect is that one little thing. You become so obsessive. And then to keep on going, because eventually you become numb to that baseline and you need the next goal, as you said. You keep adding the supplements, adding the stuff. And it reached that point where I wouldn't even feel happy or fulfilled, and this is when I really first started getting into health, unless I had all the supplements, unless I went to the gym, unless I did my stretching, unless I did yoga, unless I did this hot yoga thing, unless I did cryo, and unless I had my you know, blue light block and sleeping glasses, and I calculated the exact time, and I turned on the flux, and I turned off the internet at a certain time, and ease myself into bed. If I missed one step, I felt like shit. And it does the opposite of what you think. It's like you're always living like, like compulsively to run away from it. You know, and then you just keep on adding and adding. And it's the same as someone who's like fucking chasing validation. It's like, I hate all this. More validation, more validation, more validation. That was me before the scandal. I'm like, I need more validation. It was like obsessed, you know? It's like coming from a compulsive place. That's the key. If you're like compulsively going about it, if you need it, if you don't get it, it feels like you're losing your drug hit. That's when it's running you and that's when you need to let go of the resistance of not getting it. And then what you'll notice is like, let go of the resistance of having, you know, missing a little supplement, missing one vitamin, it's fine. Whew. And be okay with none of it. And then you'll be inspired and you'll notice you're gonna actually do a lot of those things, but it won't be as paranoid. You will still hustle, but you won't be as paranoid about hustling. You'll still be productive, but it'll be coming from a different place and your experience of it will be different. You know, I like to illustrate it with, um, like for me growing up, I was really into music and, uh, you could view it as like, like this is how I'd experience it. I would hustle at school to get good grades, but I hated it. You know, it's like I'd go to school, it's like, do this assignment. I was like, fuck my life. And I'm like fucking hustling, like doing all this willpower. And I get it done. And then I go home and I remember I'd just gotten this new program called Pro Tools to like edit songs. And I would spend the whole night just up looking up fucking instruction videos and stuff, how to do Pro Tools. Realistically, way more work learning the Pro Tools than that little assignment but it required no willpower and it was just fucking effortless. Way more work, my experience of that work was very different. So your experience of in, you know, improving yourself or like being healthy will be very different once you move it over to instead of running away from to compensate, already coming from that full self-acceptance, already coming from that 10 out of 10. That's how you truly thrive. And that's how I even link it to, it's also about taking action. Because it's easy to think with, 
oh, you know, full self-acceptance. You just sit there and then you're just like, I'm accepting. <laughs> and we have a lot of resistance to it because that's what we think. Like if I felt complete, why would I do anything? I would just sit there and just be complete. And it's the same as a guy learning success with women when I tell him, don't need the girl. Do not need the girl to complete you. And then the guy's like, well, if I didn't need her, why would I talk to her? <laughs> you know, that's what we assume. If we didn't need her, we would just not talk to girls. But that's not true. You would still talk to girls, but coming from a different place. It wouldn't be out of desperation. It wouldn't be compulsive. It would be coming out of inspiration. Something else would drive you. And that's ideally where you need to kind of move living your life. Instead of compulsive, compulsive, resist this, try to avoid this. It's all good and let inspiration kick in. Feel complete. Feel enough. Feel 10 out of 10. See what kicks in. It still doesn't take away from the hustle. doesn't take away from the action. In reality, it makes you kill it even more. Because now you're not compensating. There's not resistance. There's not that energy to run away from. You're just fully there. And because it feels so effortless, you just fucking crush. So that's the key. It's full self-acceptance to crush it. And if you see someone who's like, it's full self-acceptance, but take no action, or their life doesn't really reflect it, it's usually because there's that resistance now to taking action, which leads to procrastination. You know? And the same with feeling full self-acceptance. It doesn't mean give up shit either. Because you'll see that a lot. You know what? You need to um, stop uh, hustling. You need to kind of go in this little cabin for a little while. Retire from society. Go in the woods. Give up your possessions. Become a minimalist. Give your money away. It's okay. You don't need it. Let go of the money. It's not let go of the money. It's let go of that attachment to money. You know? And then what you'll see is, depending on what kicks in, you'll probably be inspired to make money. So it's still killing it in the real world. It's not the thing, it's the place it's coming from. Huge, huge, huge. It's both. But instead of coming from down here, you're already coming from up here and killing it. Versus coping with this shit. <coughs> and trust me, you do that, you'll slay. Because now there's not all this resistance. You're not fighting against anything. One thing I did for a period of time is ask yourself at the end of every day, what were your successes today? And like write down five successes. Most of us are like, Nothing. <laughs> Everything was failure today. <laughs> Change it. Be like, okay, what were my successes? This, this, this. My success, um, I got out of bed. There's a, lower the bar. Lower the bar. You know, for us to give ourselves props, it's so high. And that's also due to the way that we're conditioned. Again, because if you're a kid, it's ex expected that you do well. So when you do well, it's like, okay, good job. You did, you did good. If you do bad, there's a lot of emotional charge. Like, you fucking failed the test, you motherfucker. Like, you know, maybe not, I mean, I doubt your parents will call it motherfucker. <laughs> but, um, but there's like a lot more charge. So you remember and you're conditioned to have like a lot of <gasps> towards the failure stuff. So every time you fail, there's that emotional response. When you do well, it's like, okay, I did well. We have trouble giving ourselves that prop. So kind of condition your mind to look for the successes, you know? Um, I make guys do this on, on boot camp. Like if we go out and we start, you know, interacting with women, I make them email me at the end of every night, 30 things you did well. 30. And they're like, oh, nothing. I'm like, don't show up unless I get a list of fucking 30 things. And then you lower the bar. It's like, I said hi. I walked in. I smiled. I did this. And you start noticing the successes. And then guess what? You start building that cycle. Now, this is a good stepping stone. as a little side note linked to what we talked about before. Because right now, you then feel good only when you acknowledge your successes only when it depends on stuff, but it's better than feeling like shit, you know? And that's usually like how it goes in terms of the uh, personal development journey is most people are down here and they feel horrible and they have all their excuses for it and they live in a reality that reinforces it, you know? And um, I'll see people like this on, on boot camp all the time. Like they show up and they could have the most amazing night out. Like this actually happened, <sighs> fuck, Helsinki two weeks ago. Guy comes on boot camp, we go out, has a blast. You're in Helsinki, you're on boot camp, bunch of cool dudes, you're with me, we're going out, we're having a fucking blast, we're in like one of the best clubs, super stunning girls, super friendly, everyone's laughing, and uh, the guy has a blast, and this girl's like, you know what, come home with me. They go home and they cement the moment. He shows up the next day, I'm like, so, how was your night, man? Like, I'm like, oh shit, like, I wanna hear about this. He's like, it was okay, I guess. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, you know, I, I, I talked to the girl, but, 
it kind of felt like, you know, she was gaming me more than I was gaming her. <laughs> and, <laughs> and um, I mean, she was hot, like she was really hot, but I've slept with like one or two girls who were hotter than her before. <laughs> and um, I mean, I guess it was good, like, you know, I stuck in there, but I feel like, you know, I could have done a little better. And, um, and yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck, dude? And it was, that was like the short version. It went on to be like this 10 minute story of just getting more depressing and depressing. Like I thought he was talking about someone dying, like a funeral. It was like, it was horrible. And then this happened. And this. I was like, oh my God, dude. And you'd think this is like a one case scenario, but it happens a lot. Um, another guy in Chicago shows up, first night of boot camp, we go out, have a blast. He meets a girl and I'm like, hey, you know, um, stick on that girl, we're gonna go to another bar. You know, see what happens. Show up the next day, I'm like, so what happened? He's like, oh, you know, we, we stuck around, we chatted for an hour or so, it was a blast. And uh, I then walked her home and she said, you know what, um, have a great night, I'm gotta wake up early. So we left it at that. I'm like, oh, that's cool, dude. And then uh, I text her today, um, we met up and I slept with her. And he was just super sad, I'm like, what, you slept with her? I never, I'm like, fucking awesome. He's like, I guess. As he's saying that story, this is the second night, we're all sitting at a restaurant talking about it, a girl walks up and interrupts us. Interrupts us. Like, Excuse me, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I saw you and I had to say hi to you to the fucking student. Can I have your number? And he's like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, what? We then go out and the girl's like texting him like, hey, I really want to talk to you. Um, here, I'm in my pajamas, sending like a sexy picture of her. Here's my address, come over. And he's like, Julian, should I go over? <laughs> like, yes. And then the next day he's like, oh, I fucked her. <laughs> so it's like, you just can't give yourself that props. I'm like, God damn, dude, like change it, change the self-talk. So that's most people, you're down here. Step one, usually for personal development is do whatever you can to rise above this. And that's where you start changing the self-talk. If you're always negative, 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 make it positive. You know, you start rising up. Now that's step one. It's like optimize this. You're still running away from this towards this, but it's better than being at the bottom here. However, there's a second step, and that's drop the running away from completely. And that's what I teach in Transformation Mastery. It's, you know, if this is, say, scarcity, this is abundance, most of us were acting from scarcity, acting from feeling like shit, running towards something better. And you can view it as like the scarcity paradigm. Here there's these abundance paradigm. We're trying to reach this while acting from here. But as long as you're acting, running away from, you'll never get there. So the key is, you can be at the bottom here and feel like shit, or you can optimize it, but the only way to get here is to drop it completely and move into there. And then it's letting go of everything to feel good. I don't need to, the five wins every single day. I don't need the five successes every single day to feel good. I just feel good, why? Just cause, I start there. And that's hard, yeah. And that's the hard thing to do though, cause similar to what we were talking about before, it's like you're, um, you're investing in this, you know? And this is a question I get too. It's like, how much should I optimize first? And my answer is just enough. The bare minimum for you to have an opening to dropping it. Anything beyond that is actually taking you further and further away from the goal. Okay, do you guys get that? You running away from feeling like shit, improving yourself, eventually you have enough, you're, you reach a point where you can kind of accept that I don't need to hustle to feel good. Once you reach that point, you gotta drop it. Because beyond that, it's only getting you fucking further stuck in this paradigm. The more you act within a certain paradigm, the more you get sucked into it. It's like fucking quicksand. Because you're reinforcing it, as we said before, you're investing in it, and you don't wanna drop it. Um, Stephen Covey talks about paradigms in uh, The Seven Habits of um, Highly Effective People, and he says, you could view it like, um, like two maps. Like say, we're in fucking Zurich. Say I give you a map of Geneva. And I'm like, hey, find your way around Zurich. That's like, let's just say the scarcity map. Now you're trying to find your way, but it's the wrong map. That's why you never get here. So you're trying to find your way and um, you keep finding your way and you keep investing in it. And let's just say you spend your entire life trying to find your way around Zurich using a map of Geneva. And I come up to you and I'm like, hey, it's the wrong map. Let go of it. <laughs> Are you just gonna be like, oh, okay. Or are you gonna be like, hell no. I've spent my entire life working on finding my way with this map. I'm going to make it work. Because otherwise it means acknowledging that you've been fucking up for so long. And you've been using the wrong paradigm for so long. You're, you're so identified. You're so attached to it. You're so hooked to it. You don't want to let go of it. 
And that's what happens the more you act in this. So do the bare minimum and then fucking throw that map away. And that's why it never really works either because you can use all the positive attitude as you want. You're still using the Geneva map in Zurich. More willpower, more hustle using that map isn't going to work either. It's a different map. And that's step two. So ground zero is everyone usually feels like shit. You reinforce it. You have your excuses. Step one is you optimize. Step two is you drop. That's the true journey of personal development. And I mean, the cool thing about nowadays with the internet is like more people are aware of step one, optimize, 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 which is way better than staying down here. But we've kind of reached that point where we're realizing there's something missing, which is the second step. You know, there's something <laughs> missing. And the more you venture down this road of optimizing or the road of typical personal development, the more you realize it because it robs you of your excuses. That's the big benefit of step one, by the way, is you realize it didn't work. You know? Down here, if I had all the money, I'd be happy. That's why I'm feeling like shit. It's the money. It's the girls. But then you get the girls and you get the money and you're still down there. You realize it didn't work. Anyone have that? Like When I started out, I didn't even want a fucking girlfriend. I thought that for me to feel up here, to feel fucking awesome, all I wanted was a girl to laugh at one of my jokes in front of my friends. That was it. That was like my goal of success. It's like, if I could learn these skills, and when we're out at the bar, my friends are sitting there, I can go up to the hottest girl, say hi, have her laugh at my joke, have them see her laugh at my joke, and then me walk back to them, them ask, hey, what did you do? What, did, how, what, what happened? I'm like, that was just cool. <laughs> that was my goal. If I could just get that validation, fuck yeah. Then guess what? It happened. And I got a little high. I was like, ooh. But then I was back to shit. I'm like, fuck, maybe it's more. Maybe, you know, I need a date with a hot girl. And I got a date with a hot girl. Maybe I need to kiss a hot girl. Kiss a hot girl. Maybe I need to sleep with a hot girl. Sleep with a hot girl. Maybe I need to sleep with more hot girls. More hot girls. Maybe I need more validation. I need validation from the girls and the men. And that was my life. It's like, imagine like how, how much, this is how crazy it is, how much validation you get. Not only when you sleep with a beautiful girl, but then when you tell everyone about it and people cheer you on. It's insane, you know. Um, just think of how good you feel, or like the little validation hit you get, when you tell a friend of yours that you slept with this beautiful girl. You're fucking feeling like on cloud nine, because you're like, I got the girl, man, and then I got her. And he's like, dude, fuck yeah. And you're like, yeah. Like that's, just, you know. <coughs> My life was like traveling around, tons of girls, and then walking in front of crowds like this, and I'm like, and then, wait for the punchline. I slept with her, and everyone's like, Whoa, like cheering. <laughs> Insane. So you're like, so much validation. And I'm like, but I'm still not there. And then it fucks with you. Because then you reach a point where you tried everything and nothing worked. So in reality, again, the more you kind of venture up to, the more you realize nothing works and the scarier it gets because you're running out of options. You get the girls, it didn't work. You get the money, it didn't work. You get the status, it didn't work. Nothing's working. Because it's in another paradigm. You got to drop this paradigm. You know? And uh, again, the more you invest it, the more stubborn you are. For me to drop it, it took that media thing. Otherwise, I would never have dropped it. Ever, ever, ever. I was so invested. I was invested more than anyone. You told me about dropping it. You told me about guided releases. You told me about all that shit. I'd be like, fuck you, dude. Hustle, motherfucker. Stop being a bitch. Are you a spiritual bitch? That's what I'd be saying. I, I kid you not. I'd be the most closed off. There was no opening because I was so invested. Everything I'd done for like the first eight years was... Optimize, optimize, optimize. I've been using that map, investing in that map, spending all my money and energy in that map, trying to make the map of Geneva work in Zurich. You tell me, dude, it's the wrong map. I'm like, fuck no, motherfucker. You're a pussy spiritual bitch. That's what I'd say. A pussy spiritual bitch. Go on and meditate, man. Do a little meditation while I'm fucking your girlfriend. That's what I'd say. I was so obnoxious. And, you know, thank God. Like, it was... It was the worst experience, but the most amazing experience because it forced me to <laughs> drop it and have a glimpse of it. It's what creates that opening. And this is something to kind of also take in whenever you hit, you know, one of those moments where you do kind of have this life crisis. Like, for me, it was extreme, but we all go through it. You know, different things that just kind of come in the way of the direction you're going in in life. You're going in this direction, everything's going according to plan, bang, something hits you. And it kind of disrupts you. And we tend to freak out. Like, this is horrible. But one of the most valuable things you'll get out of it is it creates an opening for something new. Either a new direction or for you to take in something else. To take in feedback because we're so invested in it. 
not just in this paradigm, but in terms of who we are. You know, a lot of us experience resistance when we get feedback just from a friend. A friend's like, hey, dude, change this. You're like, fuck you, man. You have massive resistance. Here, it means doing that to yourself about everything. Just by the fact that you're open to hearing this type of information, you're there. Now, you could also be hearing me talking about this, and you could be thinking like me. You're like, fuck, Julian turned into a spiritual bitch, man. What a pussy. You could be thinking that too. In that case, you, you're pro there's not that opening there, and that's fine. Again, everyone's at their own journey. But if there's that opening where you kind of resonate a little bit with this, you're there. And also, it's kind of reflecting back on your successes and lowering the bar. Like here, I'm saying, you know, I made all this money and the girls and the travel, and that's when I realized. No, in reality, I realized way earlier, but I just wouldn't let myself look at it. Like, lower the bar. Like, you think, again, maybe kissing a girl will complete you. A lot of guys, like, if I could just get a girl to kiss me, it'd be awesome. And then you kiss her, and here you're probably chasing something new. You know, my other favorite example is like cell phones. Every time there's a new phone that comes out, I mean, that's probably just me, but I think it's like, it is, I'm like, fuck yeah, it's like the most awesome thing ever, and I'm like looking up the fucking videos on it. I'm like, this is the solution to all my problems. <laughs> I hate this phone. Like, I look at my old phone and I hate it. I'm like, this piece of shit. Go up and get the new one, and I'm like, they even let you, like, in Apple, like, I don't know how many of you are fans of Apple anymore, but like, they let you open the box, and it's like fucking Christmas morning. You're like, and they're like, would you like to hold it, sir? I'm like, yes, yes, I would. <laughs> now, the first couple days of having that fucking phone, I'm treating it like it's the most precious thing in my life. I'm like, <sighs> like setting it down. I'm like, the, it's like the fucking precious, you know? Then, a month passes. Fuck this shit. And I drop it like that. Would I ever dare drop it like this when I first got it? <laughs> Fuck no. And then, what am I doing? This phone sucks. I think the next one. I saw a little preview video of the next one. The next one. The next one. And that's what we do with our successes. Yeah, we don't realize it. We just get sucked back into the, <gasps> the hypnosis of just chasing more. And that's what we do here. It's like, you've all had enough fucking phones to realize the next phone is not the way there. <laughs> but it's easier to tell us, no, 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 this time it'll be different. It's like you're gambling. It's like, no, 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 this time different. I already gambled so much, man. I don't want to let go of all that. It means all that was a waste. Keep on gambling, man. Maybe the iPhone 8. Maybe iPhone 18 will solve my problems. We do that with girls, too. It's like, I mean, it's crazy. It's like we, we think, especially as a newbie, and this is why, I mean, we also freak out. It's like we project so much on the girl. We think that if I could only, not even date, sleep with this girl, have this girl like me, all of my problems in the world will be solved. In the moment, that's what we think. We think that our financial problems will be solved, our life situation, our job, everything will be solved. It's only this. So much projection, and then it's like, it doesn't work. So it's like being honest with yourself. It's like, okay, enough's enough, man. You've tried it enough. Stop being so stubborn. We're all so stubborn, by the way. So f I I'm the most stubborn. But it's like, enough's enough. Try something new. Maybe this is not the way. And then it's also kind of being honest with yourself. Like, although you have all these new phones, <laughs> all these new references, um, you work on yourself, all this new shit, it's like underneath it all, if you're truly honest, did anything really change? And that's, I mean, what kind of shocked me too. It's like, even before the scandal, it's like, here I am, traveling around, doing all this shit, but underneath it all, it was still the same me from the small town in Switzerland, who kind of felt like shit and just anxious underneath it all. You know, yeah, you've optimized with a lot of willpower, you're trying to maintain it, but underneath it all, did anything really change? And you can kind of sit down with yourself here and be like, hmm, did it really? Or have you just kind of amplified the front, but the person underneath it is still there? And if so, it's maybe trying something new. And just that opening to try something new is the first step. I mean, this is the coolest thing with, by the way, launching like Transformation Mastery is like seeing so many people be open to it, you know? Because I'm like, little story about launching this program, like I had no idea how well it would do. You know, like this is the first full self-help program I ever put out or the company ever put out. And uh, we had no fucking idea, you know, it's a lot more of a sure thing to release a new dating program with Infield. No? It's like, Infield, everybody, yay! Way more sure thing, it's what you know. It's what you're already invested in. Everyone connects with it, everyone resonates with it. Me coming up and be like, hey, fuck hustle. You don't want to hustle. <laughs> fuck hustle, man. <laughs> Whoa! It's, it's, it's a, you know, hey, it's not gonna get you there. 
All those girls aren't going to get you there. The validation ain't going to get you there either, man. You've been fucking up all these years. <laughs> fucking up. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, shit. Like, are people ready? And uh, actually seeing the amazing response. Like, as of today, Transformation Mastery beat all the records of all my dating programs. Even Pimp way back in the day. Blew it out of the fucking water. Um, and that like, was like, what the fuck? Like, and that's what's really cool. Is like, it shows us, like, we're at this point where we're ready for the second step. And people are open for the second step. Even people in, like, again, pickup, it's like trying it, trying it, trying it. It's like, there's so much information out there, too. It's like, you know, more people are getting there. And more people are having these realizations. Like, it didn't work. And you're ready for that second step. The same in business. It's like, go online and, like, most typical self-help or business videos are all about hustle, 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 hustle. Now, remember, it's not the thing. It's the place it's coming from. You still got to work hard for a lot of things you want to accomplish in life. But the place it's coming from should be already abundance, not scarcity. And that's what we're realizing is like people are hustling, they're burning self, themselves into the ground. People going the full traditional self-help, they turn into those like, ah, hey, like, you know, compulsive weirdos. For real. <laughs> I like placing those labels. It's like, I don't want to be a compulsive weirdo. But like they can't even connect with people because they're so like <gasps> compulsive, you know. And actually another thing with the self-help junkie is not only will you be compulsive, you'll just shame everyone else for not doing what you're doing because you're so bought into it. You guys ever have that? When you start eating healthy, you just shame everyone for not eating healthy. Like you go to dinner with them, you're like, oh, you're getting the fries, huh? <laughs> it has nothing to do with them. It's just so you feel a little bit better about yourself. The same as when you get into business or personal development, you're like, oh, you're not working on yourself, huh? <laughs> you know what you should do? Ba 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 ba. You know what you should do? Da 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 da. That's a self-help conference. People going up like, ha, ha, hey, man, you know what you should do? You should try this new little fucking thing. Oh, and you know what you should do? Did it? Oh, you're not doing that? Oh, my God, dude. Ugh. Like, that's it. <laughs> so we're at this point. Next step. Next step. And uh, that's what's really fucking cool, you know? And, um, you know, it's cool. It's controversial, too. But, like, this is the shit that honestly, like, changed my life. Like, first eight years, hustling up, I did... Being modest, way better than most. Some could say the best. <laughs> However, <laughs> joking. However, it required a lot of willpower and effort. I never enjoyed it, and I always had to fight losing it because I felt pulled back. Change it, and then you fucking thrive. And that was the last two years since the scandal. My being modest again transformation last two years tops the first eight years by a fucking long shot. However, it felt way more effortless. Because now everything's like pushing you towards what you want versus you trying to fight against it and make yourself do it. And not even enjoying it. This is Julian, and welcome to Transformation Master. It was fucking amazing. This was huge for me. This was so, so important. This gave me by far the greatest epiphanies I've ever had. And we got like real deep and I found some issues within myself. One of the best things I've seen so far in my life. What you're about to experience going through this program is what completely changed my life on every single level, okay? Be it health, wealth, relationships, higher purpose, you name it, this is the stuff that finally, finally produced that true, long-lasting personal transformation we're all after. Okay, now, before we dive into what you can expect when you start your transformation and how this program works, because it is a completely new approach here with new methods designed to produce results for you fast, I wanna share with you a little bit of the backstory of how Transformation Mastery came into existence. So I first got into this whole personal development, self-help world back in 2006 when I randomly found out about success with women and the fact that you can work on yourself and transform who you are into someone who is more confident, fun, attractive, playful, so on and so forth. Because up until that point, and I don't know if you know this about me, I was stuck, okay? I was completely stuck. I was at the bottom. I was someone who was anxious 24 seven, who was stressed out 24 seven, miserable 24 seven, paranoid. I couldn't put myself out there. I couldn't speak up. I wouldn't jump at opportunities. I was just living a very miserable existence. I was depressed. I was overwhelmed. I was drained, I had no energy, and it was straight up hell. You know, on a scale of one to 10, if I had to rate my experience of myself, it was a good three out of 10. And it's been like that as far as I can remember. You know, ever since I was a kid, like my earliest memories, it was like that. Like that was me, and I had no hope. 
you know, I kind of came to terms with, hey, I guess this is just how things are. And I had my excuses. Well, you know, I grew up in Switzerland. Maybe if I lived in America, things would be different. Maybe if I had cooler friends, maybe if I was better looking, maybe if I, you know, I, I, this thing happened to me, if that person didn't screw me over, so on and so forth. And I just lived a hell of a life. And finding out about this whew, gave me that hope. I was like, whoa, I can actually have control over this. I don't have to stay a victim. I can step it up and change who I am. I don't have to accept this shitty reality, this shitty state of being. And I did. Okay, I became obsessed with transforming who I am and I optimized everything. I optimized my personality. I became more confident. I worked on becoming more funny, more playful, more extroverted because I'm naturally introverted. It's like this would be the scariest thing ever for me back in the day. Um, I optimized my life situation. You know, I was like, okay, well, I need relationships with friends, girls. Okay, I need to travel. I need to um, make money. I need to like really live a crazy life filled with these rich experiences. Let's optimize all of that. And I did. And I went all out and in 2010, I started traveling the world and teaching literally tens of thousands of people just like you and me, face to face, how to get unstuck as well. How to transform. And I went all out. You know, I perfected my teachings and I would see every type of person. Okay, at this point, I've done five to six world tours and my schedule is every single week, I'm traveling to a new city or country every single fucking week and I'm seeing new people with new issues. I'm seeing the different subtleties. I'm seeing the setbacks. I'm seeing what's going on and I would perfect my teachings, perfect how to snap them out of it, how to help them not just settle for that shitty state of being but how to optimize it. Now one thing that I noticed over the years and this really troubled me and I'd see it in my clients but also in myself is that although we would transform ourselves, transform our lives and achieve success. It always felt like we were fighting against something to get there and any success that we would get, it would require a lot of effort to maintain. You know, it just felt like something kept pulling us back. Like we weren't meant to get the success, like the system was rigged against us. And let me ask you this, right now, if you've optimized different things in your life, does it feel like that? Does it feel like you're fighting against something? Like the system is somehow just rigged against you. And you can try to find a way there. You can really perfect the techniques, perfect the willpower and hustle your way there. But there's still that force field just kind of pulling you back, pulling you back to ground zero, pulling you right back into misery. And that's what I felt. And not just that, if you want to go really deep here, but underneath, all of that success, all the things I had optimized, my personality, my life, I still felt the same. And this is how crazy this gets. And I'm sure you can relate right now, okay, where you might have optimized a lot in your life. You might have worked on yourself, your personality. You might have worked on your financial success, gone a new job, gone a promotion, gone healthy, improved yourself, read a lot of books, so on and so forth. Just really optimize everything, trying to live a really rich, fulfilling life. However, underneath all that, underneath all that surface work, all that surface transformation, did anything really change? Or is it still that same old you? And this is something that would freak me the fuck out, where I'd have all this success and I'd fight to maintain it, a lot of effort, and then every once in a while I'd have a glimpse of that old me. If I just sat with myself and I did nothing, and just brought that awareness into my body, it was still the same old me. It was still that three out of 10 underneath it all. And uh, it would freak me out to the point where I just kind of block it off. Like, oh, just don't pay attention to that. Because what that would mean is that everything that I had done, everything that I'd worked on and optimized was simply surface level work. It was just this big, you know, endless chase of shit that just didn't do anything. You know, it's mental masturbation if you think about it. You're just like, I'm doing all the success, chasing this, yet nothing is changing deep down inside. It's not true transformation. And this is what I realized. In 2014, when I went through the most traumatic yet life-changing experience, which was the media scandal that I talk about a lot, where I pushed my marketing so far and eventually things popped and guess what? 
I did get pulled back. I see some comments from various people here about a fella called Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian no, Blanc. Julian Blanc. Blanc. Julian Blanc. Julian Blanc. You all know who Julian Blanc is. Yes. Blanc. And although that was the worst experience of my life, it was also from this experience of just losing everything. Because I lost everything that, as cliche as it sounds, I gained everything. Okay, because it forced me to stop distracting myself and just focusing on all this surface stuff, on all the external, on chasing more and more and more. And it forced me to let go of all that and even let go of the stuff that's keeping me of that three out of 10 and finally snap out and achieve that 10 out of 10. So let me explain, okay? This is how it works. Most people are stuck at the bottom, okay? They're stuck in a very shitty, miserable state of being. And that used to be me. You find out about personal development and you start optimizing yourself, you start optimizing your life. However, you're still optimizing trying to escape that shitty experience. Okay, so follow me here. At the bottom, everyone's experiences scarcity, they're coping, it's a bad state to be. They try to optimize it by running away from that. But by running away from it, they're keeping it alive. Because any movement where you're running away from something is the continuation of that thing. By you trying to be more confident, you're keeping the fact that you're not confident to begin with alive. By you trying to be happy, you're keeping the fact that you're not happy alive. By me, for example, trying to improve my three out of 10 baseline, I'm keeping that three out of 10 baseline alive. So it's literally like that fucking movie, The Matrix, where you can either be in The Matrix and just suck. You're at the bottom, there's your life, that's you, suck it. Or you can try to improve your life, but you're still in the fucking matrix. And that's why no one achieves true, deep, permanent transformation. Because it's just this surface work in the matrix paradigm. And what I got out of going through that media scandal is that it snapped me out of the matrix. I had to literally drop everything and have this glimpse of another reality, another state of being, another paradigm, not based on scarcity, but based on abundance. And that is the most life-changing moment ever. And this is what inspired Transformation Mastery. This is what got me obsessed ever since the end of 2014 up until now to create a program for you to experience that without the downside of going through a media scandal so you as well can snap out of the matrix. Loosen the fuck up, all out. Hey, like, what are you trying to do? This is about results. If you've been following my journey, what I've been teaching, I've always been about results. And this is the next level for you to fucking kill it and get more results. Because if you're coping, and follow me here, if let's just say one to 10, you're a three out of 10. Instead of coming from a solid platform of 10 out of 10 and then thriving and killing it in life, you're coping with this three out of 10. Everything you're doing is trying to compensate or escape it. A lot of energy, a lot of ah, paranoia, a lot of like waste is just going into this shitty state of just trying to survive with it. And not only that, but guess what? You're addicted to this state. And this is what kept pulling me back and what kept pulling all of my clients back. So when you change this, okay, to 10 out of 10, that's your platform. You're no longer in scarcity, you're in abundance. You can thrive and just kill it even more and you cannot imagine the possibilities. As soon as I started incorporating this into my teachings for the past two years, the results have been so fucking drastic and so effortless. It's like they've been driving with the brakes on and those brakes are finally off and you're just free. I mean, imagine that, just walking out of your house right now, walking out of the front door and just being free not defensive, not coping, not worrying, not trying to escape it, not trying to numb it, not trying to stuff it down, just feeling fucking awesome and ready to attack life. Just fucking imagine. Loud as you can. I start, I just scream. Or what is it? Like, I scream as loud as Don't I can. Don't think, do. Ah! Ah! Even more. Ah! 
Now talk. Bring it. Just don't think do. Louder. That was. That was it. I I honestly couldn't have thought of a better example. It's like, oh my passion, League of Legends. When I play Dota, like that's what turns you on. Yes. And now it's like that aliveness. Like actually look at the crowd. That aliveness, the brightness in the pupils, the smile, the genuine smile. That's what you gotta connect with. If you look at me, ever since. The end of 2014, for the past two years, versus the first eight years, 2006 to 2014, when I first got into this, those first eight years, I went all out. I became obsessed with transformation, but it's all about results here. Okay, that's how you measure this. Look at me the past two years. The change in terms of real world, real life results, these past two years, trumped the first eight by a long shot. Like you can't even fucking compare. Those first eight years in terms of results, yeah, they're pretty fucking drastic, but now these last two, they're a fucking joke. And this is what I want for you. I want you to get your fucking foot off that brake pedal, start fucking killing it, start enjoying your results, start resonating with success. You don't have to fight this uphill battle where you're being pulled back and instead you start being pulled towards your goals and you can finally feel fucking awesome and at peace inside. Okay, so it's starting with the deep work so you can then kill it with the surface work. Close your eyes and think back to one of those moments you put yourself out there and uh, you know, someone just really shamed you for what you were feeling or shamed you for what you were thinking. You know, they told you it was not okay. Um, that part of you was rejected. Um, you know, you felt maybe embarrassed, you felt upset, maybe self-hate kicked in because you shouldn't be feeling that. You're like, what's wrong with me? Why am I feeling that? Why is that coming up? And just kind of replay the scenario and just replay like all those sensations. Like how did you feel if you were anxious, if you were angry, just kind of what came up and what do you feel in your body right now? Just kind of replaying it. Do you feel hurt, betrayed, upset, embarrassed, stupid, hating yourself, beating yourself up? Just tune into it and just let it come up. So what's in Transformation Mastery and how does this all work? And the first thing I want to stress here is that it is a very experiential approach, okay? This isn't a program where you go through it and you memorize every little bit of content, every little idea trying to transform that way there. Instead, you go through this program and you let the content change what's inside. And you will notice the deeper you go into this program, the more little subtleties you're gonna start experiencing inside. And I've broken down Transformation Mastery into three main parts. There's part one, which is awareness, part two, which is proof, and part three, which is permanence. And in part one, this is where we really focus on snapping you out of this socially conditioned, scarcity-based reality. We're going to examine different paradigms. We're going to examine and question assumptions you've never questioned before and assumptions you didn't even know you were making. We're going to examine cause and effect. And here, I really want to reprogram your brain, reprogram your understanding of yourself and the world. And just by this first section, and this is how crazy it gets, you're gonna have epiphany after epiphany just exploding in your head and the changes will already start happening. And this is content and ideas you've never heard before. Um, they can be hard to swallow, but you gotta choose here. Do you wanna stay in this shitty reality? Is it the blue pill or the fucking red pill? Which one are you gonna take? Take it, swallow it, and then let's fucking do this. That's the first section. The second section is proof. And this is where I get you to experience everything that we talked about. You experience it firsthand through a guided release. And this is something that's completely new. I've never released anything like it before where you're going to sit down and it's a guided form of meditation that will get you to snap out of this reality, get you to snap out of the matrix. That's how crazy this gets. And just by this guided release, you will have that proof inside of you. You will finally have that glimpse just like me going through a worldwide media scandal, but you will have it from the comfort of your own home. 
And the third section is permanence. And that's where we go deep into your subconscious, which is another topic most people don't tackle. And this is where a lot of these assumptions and a lot of the things that are keeping this scarcity based reality that are keeping you at this shitty default state that's keeping that alive are buried in there and you need to let go of those and release them. That's how you make this permanent. So awareness, you get what's happening. Proof, you have that glimpse. Permanence, we dive into your subconscious as we dive into your childhood, different traumas, different recurring patterns in your life. We break those patterns so you're no longer a prisoner, you're no longer living in reaction and we completely free you and make this new reality, this new paradigm permanent. And I didn't just stop here. I've also added two extra guided releases where there's a morning release and an evening release. And these are releases that I personally listen to every single day. It's the first thing I do when I wake up. I put on the headphones, I listen to this release. I go to bed, I put the headphones on, I listen to this release. Just doing that, just the two guided releases, your life will drastically change. And the fifth section here is transformational infield footage. I was usually in school um, not remembering what to say, um, getting back bad grades or uh, yeah. criticism or um, in groups, social groups, gatherings, um, just people not liking me, I think. Um. So as you can see here, there's a lot more intense sensations that are surfacing. You know, she's getting a lot more emotional and that's because we're going deeper and deeper into the fear. And this is where it gets really crazy because what you're going to see in this section is all of these ideas and concepts illustrated with real life examples with people just like you and me in action and you're going to see me break it all down. So it'll give you a lot more context and help you apply it to yourself. Where if, for example, we talk about resistance, you can hear me break down resistance and I will say, it's going to show up in this way here, in this way here, in this way here, in this way here. You're going to resist snapping out of the matrix and you can understand it and you'll know how to go through it. But if you see someone else experience that resistance and you see me break it down and show you how it pops up and how subtle it is and how I help that person still blast through and finally let go and snap out of it, now you know what to fucking do. Now you have no excuse. And not only that, but now you're inspired because you feel what they're feeling in these videos. And I've also added a private Facebook group where you can network with other people going through this process, share your experiences, and really accelerate your transformation. Now, if you're really, really serious about transforming here, I've also created the transformation series. And this is a six months curriculum where every month we're going to tackle a theme. And we're going to start with apathy and self-hate and we're going to move up all the way to self-love and self-acceptance. It goes apathy, self-hate, month one. Guilt, self-sabotage, month two. Fear and self-trust, month three. Purpose and procrastination, month four. Approval and validation, month five and self-love and self-acceptance month six. And with each month, you're going to get one content video, one transformational infield video, one Q&A webinar where you can ask me any questions based on the theme of that month. And at the end of that webinar, you're also going to get a guided release done live based on your questions and based on the theme. So every month, we're going to have this guided release based on the theme, for example, fear, self-trust, you know, self-love, self-hate, purpose, procrastination. Those are huge. How to stop procrastinating. You'll have the content, you'll have the infield footage, the Q&A webinar, and the live release. This is the transformation series. This is if you're really serious about this. And I've also created the exclusive book club series where for three months, every month we're going to tackle three of the most impactful books I've ever read. These are the top three books that just really hit me at a deep level and we're going to have a webinar about the book where I'm going to be sharing my thoughts and how it impacted me and how it even impacted Transformation Mastery and then we're gonna go back and forth and I'm going to answer your questions on those books. So this is Transformation Mastery. This is how it all works. And this is what will completely change your life, just like it did for me at every single level.
okay? And uh, again, this is my masterpiece, this is it. Like this is, you know, not to get too morbid, but if I died right now, this would be the thing I'd leave behind. This is my mark on the world. Um, I mean, yeah, like I, this is it, you know? So if you resonate with this, if you wanna transform, if you want to snap out of the matrix, if you're just sick of having that shitty experience of yourself underneath it all, no matter what you get, no matter how much success you get, did anything change? You know, for me, before that scandal, by the way, I had everything I thought would make me fulfilled, happy. I thought I had everything that would change that baseline. I was traveling, I had the girls, I had the fame, I had the money, everything. Yet, nothing changed and it just freaked me out. This is what finally produced that. Change your baseline. Kill the self-sabotage. Stop being pulled back. Stop making things harder than they need be. Make things easier on yourself so you're fulfilled, you're happy, you're coming from a good place and you can just fucking kill it. That's transformation mastery. If you want that, you wanna snap out, you wanna see something that, being straight honest here, 99% of people will never see. You wanna see the other side, you wanna see what's beyond the matrix, beyond scarcity, beyond this? I mean, really ask yourself, is this really life? Like, is this all that life is? Because if so, I mean, what the fuck? That was a question I'd also ask myself. Even growing up, I'm like, is this life? Like, I always felt something was a little bit wrong with me. Like, I'm like, why do I feel so shit? Like, is this life? Is this like why I'm here? And I'd look around and everyone else was just as miserable as me. If you go out in the street, when's the last time you saw someone who's just bright and just thriving and alive? There's that light in the fucking pupils. My dad is never, <laughs> like never. Is that life? Is that what life should be? Is that the life you want for you? And if the answer is no, if enough's enough, scroll down, click the link, and I'll see you in Transformation Mastery. Join the tribe, join the movement, and let's wake up.